A good morning to you all and even good afternoon and also good evening depending on where you are listening from. I'm Steve Kumwenda, I'm a hydrogeologist at Best for in Malawi. Today I'll be making a presentation on stopping the rot, taking action to ensure boho and hand pump quality. And by the end of this presentation, we should be able to galvanize ourselves into action into stopping this rot so that we can achieve the key aspect of SDG 6.1. First of all, let me share with you some of the practical experiences that I have with my organization working in Malawi. Uh, we have a process which we call Boho Forensics. This is a detailed diagnosis of Boho and hand pump performance where we identify problems uh, to do with Boho and hand pump as well as we use methodological way of collecting uh, service using a motor customized service. Some of the key findings include unsuitable well designs and poor construction, for instance, manually cut casings, yield being insufficient and also poor siding due to lack of hydrogeological understanding. The corrosion of Afridev pump with galvanized iron components is rampant in areas where there is high electrical conductivity, for instance high salinity. Some of the key findings on Boho Forensics include pumping tests, which we conducted on 128 wells, and we found that 15% of these wells had low yielding uh, boreholes below the national uh, standard and these boreholes were commissioned for use. Also we checked on the verticality of boreholes and we found that over half of 23 wells that we surveyed had no straight boreholes. That is, uh, this has a, a big problem of causing uh, fast wearing parts to actually wear out fast. One of the striking aspects of water point failure is that many points fail in the first year or two and we call this premature failure. And this premature failure was actually one of the drivers for UNICEF and Water Aid to strive to improve the quality of drilling programs in the region. In the figure on the right which shows data from Nigeria, it has been estimated that the probability of failure in the first year or second year could be more than 35%. Therefore, we argue that this premature failure most likely was due to something technically wrong with the borehole or the pump. Now let's look at hand pump performance. If wells and boreholes are properly designed and constructed, they should be able to last for their lifetime and this should exceed more than 25 years. For instance, India Mark II and Afridev hand pumps, they are designed so that the fast wearing parts can be replaced. And over a period of 10 years or 15 years, the whole pump actually should be replaced. But we have seen pumps stop working earlier and also performing poorly. A hand pump normally breaks down for a very specific technical reason such as the breakage of a chain, rising main pipes and also other parts like o-rings, centralizers if you know boho parts. The repair, however, of these boho's depends on the ability of the community or governments to raise funds and organize an area mechanic or sort spare parts. However, with this premature failure, should we continue to burden communities and governments to continue fixing such premature uh, wells? Now, coming to rapid corrosion of hand pumps. Corrosion is the attack of surface materials by chemical processes and it can affect concrete, glass, plastic, as well as materials that contain iron. From the studies in the early 1980s and 1990s, it was observed that total iron concentration in natural groundwater is rarely greater than 1 mg per liter. The red water, which is a problem in hand pump equipped wells, is usually caused by corrosion. However, governization also is observed does not protect the rising mains and pump rods from corrosion if the water pH is less than 6.5. And also, corrosion has been known about for over 30 years. Yet, these simple mistakes are being repeated over and over again. Except for in 2018 in Uganda, the government actually made a directive to prevent further use of galvanized iron riser pipes throughout the country. Now, when hand pumps corrode rapidly, the sources are often abandoned due to poor taste of the water and color, and they are prone to frequent failure as well as rapid breakdown. Although the problem has been known since in the 80s and there have been some actions taken, rapid corrosion of hand pumps is still taking place in over 20 countries in the sub-Saharan region, as you can see from this map which we developed from a Ritlish as well as a knowledge exchange with professionals and also through the online service hosted on the uh, Rural Water Supply Network. 
Despite this preference, which you can see from the map and the widespread use of the hand pumps, rapid corrosion of hand pumps has remained on the margins in many countries on the water policies and programs being implemented. Apart from the rapid corrosion, there are also problems with uh, hand pump component quality as we'll see. We have observed specific concerns over hand pump components quality in several countries and these include the components or pump parts being too light, very thin galvanizing, and also some parts are not genuine and also not according to standards of material composition that include defective materials and also non-conformant of dimensions, specifications, and in general lack of durability. All these can lead to premature failure of the hand pump parts. Now, after observing all this road, what do we do? Well, we have a call to action. Firstly, we need to build the capacity, knowledge, and skills of consultants, drillers, managers to be able to site, procure, manage contracts, and drill, and install, and be able to supervise the construction of boreholes professionally. We also need to stop using underground hand pump parts components or pump rods, riser pumps that are made of galvanized iron. We need to ensure that all pump pipes pump parts and pipe materials meet the quality standards. This could be done by incentivizing pump manufacturers and installers to be able to deliver quality and regulate imports of hand pump components. We also need to map areas with low pH and high salinity. And alternatively, we should be able to use technologies in areas with high pH and high salinity. We should also find out the reasons for failure from before rehabilitating other boreholes in rehabilitation programs. This will prevent actually recycling this uh, over and over having boreholes that have premature failure. We need to ensure that donors, policies and financing conditions consider the risk and supervision requirements and post-construction inspection that is required in uh, boreholes uh, drilling as well as uh, borehole construction. We need to address challenges in the enabling environment including corruption and managing of uh, drilling programs. Lastly, we have a question. Can we hold the service providers, donors and implementers accountable for this discovered rot? Well, join us to stop this rot by contacting us. And also you can read more on Stop the Rot Wake through those references and also visiting the website. Thank you very much.